where you lead me I will follow When you seek me Show me the way I will go I will go to the streets I will go to the lanes I will go where you lead I will go in Jesus name I will take off my sin and shame Or I will answer just the same When Jesus calls out my name I will go I will go Lord, I will go in my school. Teach me, Lord, I will go in my work. Send me, Lord, I will go, and in the marketplace, guide me. I'll go, I will go. Go
It's another wonderful Wednesday evening. Hallelujah! And we welcome you to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online evangelistic series sponsored by the English-speaking territories of the Inter-American Division and, of course, broadcasting live from Montego Bay, Jamaica. My name is Denise Lawson Leslie. And I'm Alan Green. And of course, it's a beautiful Wednesday here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Denise, yeah, I like that smile. I like that <laughs> smile. And I can see those smiles in the virtual church. Talking about smile, there we have the best smile here from the one and only sister, Best, yes. from Grenada, the Spice Island. Welcome again, Best. Good to have you. Good to be here. Always a pleasure worshiping with my brother and my sister and all brothers and sisters around the region and around the world. And being part of this exciting evangelistic series, it's a pleasure being here. There we go. Of course, we must apologize for the late start. We had a little glitch, but nevertheless, we are here to praise the Lord. So if you're having Amen. a good time so far, you're going to text in the chat or type in the chat. Praise the Lord. All right, now, Denise, you, I know you have some information you want to share with us. As usual, go right ahead. Sure, and of course, we are, we are broadcasting live from different platforms, NCU TV, NCU Radio, Bless TV, WCCN, and of course, all YouTube and uh, Facebook platforms, HopeBeyond.net as well. Barbados Radio Station, nothing but God FM. I like that radio station. It's 104 Point seven FM. Now, Nicole, do you have a, a, a radio station in, in your nick of the wood that really giving the wind a mighty voice? We do have a radio station here. It is the Family Network here in Grenada. Um, and sometimes we partner with our cable vision here and our local government information service to spread the word. So here in Grenada, in our neck of the woods, we're spreading the word far and wide. Well, I'm going to give you this opportunity, quick and fast, to share your bundle with our viewers. Right about now, as it relates yes. to, you know. Yes, thank you. Listen to me, friends, family, in the Caribbean and around the world. Tonight, when the minister is finished presenting God's word, you've got an opportunity to chat with him in the VIP, VIP room. Don't waste that opportunity. Please stay on afterward, chat with him in the VIP room, ask him your questions, tell him your concerns and get your prayers answered. Speaking about prayers, I'm encouraging all of us to be digital disciples, but here is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask you to think about someone that you want to share the gospel with or someone that you know who've been listening to this word here and they have not yet surrendered their life to them to God, and I want you to pray for them right now and keep on praying. And then as you do that, also share the link, subscribe and like hope.net. Hope, uh, I'm sorry, hope beyond is not going anywhere. There's always going to be a message here for you. So subscribe. And every time a message comes up, you will get it. God bless you as we continue tonight to worship him. Amen, amen. And uh, of course, we are going the theme song. And join us now as we sing our theme song, Footprints of Hope. Looking back in the past some centuries ago When you walked through the garden alone You left even then your footprints of hope Will be followed by men down the road And a man did guess that he walked the path But from the day hopeless the found you sent to save your four thousand years later to many young and old now can tell of your footprints of hope, footprints of love, footprints to follow and lead us away, footprints of light, footprints of truth. Lord, help us to all. Footprints of hope, footprints of love, 
Let me invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Eternal, everlasting Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for the blessings of today. We give you thanks, Lord, for taking us here safely. We give you thanks, Lord, for the preaching of your word. We pray, Lord, that tonight as your manservant stands to proclaim your words, that hearts will be melted and individuals will make decisions for you. We pray, Lord, that you will be with this entire service tonight. And may your blessing be poured out on us, we ask, in your son's holy name. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a joy and privilege it is to welcome you as guests to the Footprints of Hope Walking with Jesus campaign. Oh, yes, we would say, Bienvenue à tous, me bar you and bless odi, as we would say in Suriname. It is a joy and privilege to know that you have been experiencing walking with Jesus. At this campaign over the past weeks, many have experienced Jesus in a brand new way. Miracles have been wrought. Many have experienced victory and deliverance. And tonight is your night to experience the same. Oh, many who have come have experienced new hope, new joy, and peace in the Lord. And so from uh, Suriname in the south, Guyana, and the Dutch islands, to Jamaica, Bahamas, and Belize in the north, in behalf of uh, the Caribbean Union Conference, in behalf of the other four English-speaking unions, welcome you. We know that you are in for a treat. God has something special in store for you. Call a friend, invite someone else to join as you experience the power of God and receive hope for your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful night in Jesus name. Amen. Join us now as we go through these wonderful songs of worship. I like to the fact that God can be God. Only He alone is holy.
Sing with me how great is our God. Now we we'll see how great, how great is our God. Want to sing how great, how great, how great. Established in the year 1907, Northern Caribbean University, the largest private tertiary institution in Jamaica, has been offering quality, holistic education in an environment that is aesthetically pleasing and student-centered, producing beacons who change their world. Owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and the Bahamas, with a student population representing over 35 countries. Northern Caribbean University is a blend of quality, liberal arts education, and cultural diversity. Your future starts now. By enrolling in one of our in-demand degree programs, you can be part of a tradition of excellence spanning over 112 years. Our programs are internationally recognized and accredited by the University Council of Jamaica and the Adventist Accrediting Association. Applying for NCU is as easy as one, two, three. One, browse our webpage at www.ncu.edu.jm to view our programs and matriculation requirements. 2. Begin, complete and submit your online application by clicking the Apply Now option on our homepage. Ensure you complete all sections of your application, taking special note of your progress to the left of your screen. 3. Upload those supporting documents. Your application depends on how quickly you provide us with those documents. Don't forget, you can visit our YouTube page for lots of exciting content on financing your tuition, student living, and the benefits of applying early. There's a place here for you at Northern Caribbean University. Remember, NCU builds character, creativity, and competence. Like hope, giving is intergenerational. It intentionally involves and impacts everyone. Kathy Calvin suggests that giving is not just about making a donation, it is about making a difference. In fact, I agree, your decision to give is the footprints of hope. You are not only helping to pass on the faith of Jesus globally, but you are living in God's relational directive to give your best to the master, to be your brother's keeper. Also, you are in a significant way helping to fulfill the prophecy of Jesus that this gospel of Jesus will be preached to every generation and then the end will come. So please follow the instructions on screen or the established protocols in your downlink center to give your best to the master. Pray with me. Father in heaven, we are grateful that you are a giver. And as a result, oh Father, because we were created in your image, there is an innate desire in us to give, to impact lives. Oh Lord, we look forward to you opening up the storehouse of heaven and blessing us individually or even as a family system. Continue to be with us as we walk in your footprints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Walking with Jesus online evangelistic series is pleased to partner with the private sector. And of course, here in this series, we talk about in-reach, upreach, and also outreach. And to talk more about our outreach program, of course, she was here with us last night, and it's very much a privilege and a pleasure to have her again. And we speak of none other than Shorna Newsom Myrie, and she operates as the regional director for the Heart NSTA Trust. The Heart NSTA Trust, of course, she will tell us more about this. But we are so happy to have you. Welcome, Director Myrie, once again to this special Thank segment. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here, and it is a pleasure of the Heart NSTA Trust to partner with Footprints for this outreach program. Awesome. And I trust that young persons especially who really would like to equip themselves with a skill should really tune in and listen keenly because I know that Director Myrie has some vital information that she wish to share with us. My first question to you though, and we would have selected three of the questions that you know, we believe are critical for you to answer this evening. So a young person out there right now is showing interest in, in getting trained, but the question is, I don't have any subjects, never finished high school. How do I get signed up on this platform? Okay, so if you don't have any subjects, then you can actually do the diagnostic test to get into heart, which is at the grade nine level. If you are below that level and is not able to pass the test, then we can actually put you in one of our adult education programs to bring you up to the level where you can get your skills training done. All right, beautiful. I hope you got that. So there's hope anywhere you take it, yes. right here on the footprints of, of hope. My other question is, there are persons outside of Jamaica, let's say within the region, all right, or even beyond the region, and uh, you talk about online courses. So when they would have completed the study, how do they obtain their certificate? I am happy you asked me that question, Alan, because... The Heart NSTA Trust is now rolling out our digital certification. Right. And so instead of getting a hard copy of your certification, you can actually get a digital version that you can share with your employers and they can validate it to ensure that it is authentic. You got that. All right. Beautiful. Finally, so I'm 86, still strong and able to work. My mind working good, mental faculties. Am I over the road, over the hill? Am I still able to sign up to your program? What age group? Uh, once you're 17 years and over, you can access any of our programs. And I really want to promote to the young people especially, a lot of them are sitting at home, not engaged. We are encouraging you this evening to get on with the link. It is displayed on the screen. Apply for a program and move from where you are to where God wants you to be. Thank you so much. Well, that is it from us right here on the Footprints of Hope, very special feature as we focus on our outreach. Now, I trust that that information was very much vital for you and you will take advantage. Thank you so much again, Director Myrie. A God pleasure. bless you. At this time, we have a very special segment coming up and it's all about prayer. So I'm going to turn this over now to Pastor Ewan Orr, who will lead us that part of our service tonight. We're happy that you have joined us tonight. We have come to that point where we are at hope, at the mercy seat. At the mercy seat, we will find Christ who will give hope to the dying world. At the mercy seat, individuals tonight can find answer to the challenges that you're going through in your families. We are reminded that when we pray, God delivers. So we're asking you tonight to join us in prayer as Ainsley Richards and myself will petition the throne on your behalf. We will tonight be asking Pastor Ainsley Richards, who is the ADRA director of the Southeast Belize Mission, to talk to God on your behalf, on our behalf. Won't you join us at this time as Ainsley Richards will petition the throne, and thereafter, I will pray. Let me say a pleasant good evening to each and every one. It is so good to come in the presence of God and to speak to our Lord and Father, 
who answers our prayers. Let us pray. Mighty God, everlasting Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your love towards us. Ever since we had begun Footprints of Hope, you have been with us. You have directed us. Many prayers have been lifted up to you, gracious Father, and we thank you for the answers that you have already given. Tonight is no exception. We come to you in the mighty name of Jesus as we lift up other petitions to your throne of grace. And we ask that your blessings will come down as you look in your storehouse and you see the blessings that will fit each and every person according to his or her need. Father, as we come to you in faith, we want to lift up others before you who might be sick at this moment. They might be going through varying kind of challenges, varying kind of diseases, varying kind of sicknesses, but we are so happy that you are that bam in Gilead, that you have never failed a case, that you have always come through for your children, and that you will come through again tonight. We want to lift up your name likewise for those that might be struggling between two opinions, whether or not by these series are over, that they should give their hearts to you. Gracious Father, I pray that they will not tarry, they will not linger, but that they will be able to say all to Jesus, I surrender. As these meetings go on, as these broadcasts go on, may many, many souls be brought to your kingdom and may people see Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. We ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Continue in prayer. The invisible, the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God, the creator of the universe. We come to you, O oh God, and we ask of you in a very special way like David. Purge not only this lump of clay, but purge everyone even now who has joined on this platform. Oh, gracious God, we are saying to you simply tonight, hear our humble cry. While on others, though are calling, please don't pass planet Earth by. We need you, sweet Jesus, if there's ever a time that this Earth need your presence in our lives we certainly need you now. We're mindful that the devil has seek to shackle individuals in their different circumstances. There are individuals who are feeling shackled in homosexuality, but great God, we ask that you will break the chain tonight. There are individuals who want to surrender to you because, Lord, they recognize that the world is coming to an end and the devil has held them in the gambling house. But we ask that you will break the chains tonight. There are individuals, great God, who are shackled in shock up lifestyle and they want to be joined in holy matrimony. But we call upon you to visit in those situations. Oh, Father, there are many who are still in the valley of decision. But we pray as the devil seeks to take residence in men and women's heart, we call upon you in the name of Jesus to serve that rascal eviction notice and set your people free. We ask that you will not just break some change, but you will break every chain and set your people free set us free set them free so they can serve you in spirit and in truth so they will see you high and lifted up and come to glorify you before time changes to eternity put your hand tonight oh god on your man's servant one more time give him a fresh anointing May, Lord, as the word projects from his voice, they will go forth with power, with authority, and with clarity. 
And one more time, the devil's kingdom will experience a terrible blow. Because tonight, souls will say, yes, Lord, yes. Rescue your people. Those on the YouTube platform, the Facebook, and the various platforms, whether in Jamaica or across the parts of the world, come down in a special way tonight and hear the cry of your people. As we ask these and other mentioned mercies with thanksgiving, we humbly say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? I hope so. But just in case you haven't done that, I pray the living God you'll do that tonight. Because you can only be blessed. Find peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. And that's why earlier in this service, we had three persons who were baptized, surrendering their all to Christ. Would you say amen? And I am looking forward to a great weekend. I mean, there are, there are folk calling. I need to apologize for, I was just checking to see that there were so many persons who said they were reaching out to me. Today has been a long day in meetings all day today. Try to call some of you, but didn't get to all of you. I'll try again tonight when I get done, and hopefully sometime tomorrow. But if you can't reach me, there are a number of others. Feel free to reach out on the numbers on your screen and there'll be somebody too happy to reach out to you whether you're calling from uh, Jamaica or the Caribbean Union or anywhere in the English speaking Caribbean or from China or Africa or wherever we are blessed we, we, we are blessed by the amazing move of God that folk across the islands and the continents are connected by the grace of God and the power of the everlasting gospel and I want to welcome tonight three wise persons, uh, the farthest point of East. And as I would love to tell you that they say some wise men came from the East at the time of the birth of Jesus. But the proof that they were wise, they followed the star and headed West. And so I want to welcome the three officers from the Northeast Jamaica Conference. The president is here, the secretary is here, and there's a rose between the two of them. Now, now whatever else you say, that's your word, not mine. I'm just saying there is a rose between the two of them. And so we welcome the president, the secretary, and the treasurer. It's our, we are honored that you could grace us with your presence. At least uh, we have three more persons on that side. And we are so blessed to have you with us. And I want to, to tell you that uh, this coming weekend, there are persons who are deciding, who have decided, who have made up their minds that no matter what happened, they will make their decision. They have made their decision. Some had gotten married in the week to be baptized on Saturday coming. You didn't hear me out there. I said some uh, exchange wedding vows in the week to get married on Saturday, to get baptized on Saturday coming. Some will be getting married before the end of the week. Would you say amen? Will you be in that number? Maybe you need to be in that number. You need to do whatever needs to be done so you can bring your life in harmony with the will of God. And I've been blessed by the amazing grace of God. And I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank God. He's blessed me with the most understanding family anywhere in the world. Are you listening to me? And I want to thank my wife and girls for their understanding and their kindness and their prayers. They, they keep texting thumbs up and, and uh, prayers and stuff. I appreciate that. But beloved, whatever you do, if you are a parent, 
I, I, I spoke uh, this morning and prayed with a father whose uh, son, I think it is, will be getting baptized this weekend. And I granted the father the joy of his heart to participate in that baptism. It's the joy of every parent. And I can't understand why you as a parent would want to prevent your child, your son, your daughter from surrendering to Christ in baptism. It's better for you to encourage them to go forward, pray them up, help them to grow, be there with them, be there beside them. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when they're going to die. My heart still ache about that young son, that young man. The car was abducted, well, kidnapped or taken away, and they found him with his throat cut. It's a wicked world we live in. And Christ is saying it's time to make your calling and election sure. And so I want to tell you, beloved, all around the world, this weekend, there'll be a great baptism. And I look forward. You know, there are folk, you, you don't have to fly to be here, but I've got to testify. There are folk flying. They've booked their flight to be here, to be baptized right in this place. We look for the day when from the east and the west, the north and the south, we'll meet around God's great white throne. Would you say amen? And I pray the living God you'll make that decision before it's too late. But I just glance through the corner of my eye and discover I have company. And you know, I almost say, forgetting those things which are beside you. It's good to have you up here this evening. You see, when you're in kind of black, I can hardly see you. <laughs> but now that I've seen you, it's time to rejoice together as they sing our song of praise and testimony about the goodness before you sing before you sing somebody text whatsapp me a, a little teeny beady girl maybe boy or girl i don't know the gender but, but she was singing the song that you're singing she could hardly call the words I, she's running after running after me but i want to thank god and, and while you're doing that i i almost forgot and i would i would not forgive myself but i want to say happy birthday to Lynette Maud Kanai. I think it's your 84th birthday. I know you have your tablet open. I know you're watching. And I know you didn't know that I know it's your birthday. Don't blame me. Blame Margaret for that, you see. You blame Margaret for that. But I want to wish you and say to you, happy birthday on behalf of all your children and your grandchildren. The one and only Lynette Maud Kanai, may the blessings of Almighty God rest upon you. And now we'll sing our song of testimony. Father, throughout all these nights and all these days, you've made your word manifestly clear. In times when our human strength wasn't there, you showed up in this place. In the midst of perplexity and illness, you never failed. You never failed. You've never failed. You've never, ever failed. 
in demonstrating your loving kindness. And so we thank you and we ask one more time for struggling hearts tonight that you'll say a word, God, that will move them over the line. That you'll say a word that would conquer sinners and comfort saints. That you'd say a word that would encourage the discouraged. That would give hope to the despondent that would strengthen the weak. You'd say a word, God, that would keep the strong growing even stronger. Oh God, we pray again tonight that you would give the wind a mighty voice. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all persons, regardless of the color of their skin and the texture of their hair and the content of their head and the context of their social circumstances, May the blessed Holy Spirit take the simple words tonight, anoint them with power and conviction, and bring victory across the length and breadth of this world for the glory of your name and the saving of our souls is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let God's children say, Amen. Amen. Road signs are fascinating. You are familiar with one of you several times this week. and You've seen it at railway crossings. Stop, look, and listen. It is always dangerous, and, and many persons have lost their lives attempting to cross the railway line, the train line, while the train is coming. They tell themselves that they can beat it and sometimes they, they say that the train is going to take so long and they've got to hurry to get across and many of them have lost their lives because they never stopped to look and to listen. We're familiar with, with one that most of us sometimes pretend we didn't see, that speed limit. That number that's there written up and sometimes you think when your right foot gets happy, you don't see it. And then up comes that hand in the roadway and the red seam beside there will straighten out your mental fog. You know the story. Or the flickering blue light coming up with a sound behind you. Why are you thinking that I'm used to it? Road signs are fascinating. You see signs like detour. And usually it's either when there's an accident or when there is a disaster of some kind and they want you to find a safe, safe path. A detour sign means don't go any further along the path you're on. For your own safety, make a right turn or a left turn or sometimes a U-turn. Our subject tonight is seventh seal danger. It's time to detour. Seventh seal danger. I want to look with you at a danger that comes up under the seventh seal in the book of Revelation. Now the book is fascinated with a number of sevens. You have the seven stars, the seven letters, the seven churches, the seven beatitudes, the seven trumpets, the seven spirits of God, the seven last plagues, the seven seals. You have a number of sevens in the book of Revelation. And in the eighth chapter tonight, I'm not going to deal with, with the seventh seal. There are so many things wrapped up in here. I could preach on it for the whole week and not repeat the issues wrapped up in this seal. The Bible said, beginning at Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1, and when he had opened the seventh seal, can I hear you say seventh seal? There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Some scholars and uh, Bible readers have given uh, interpretations to this half an hour. There's a school of thought that measured the time as far as 
the day, year principle. They've calculated that it's the, it's the time it will take uh, from earth to heaven at the time of the sound of the trumpet. Fascinating indeed is that interpretation. But I'm not going to go there. In verse 2, the Bible said, and I saw the seven angels. And you've got to understand that the particular presence of the word T-H-E before seven is intended to highlight the particular nature of these seven. I've told you that there's a, a, a long list of seven and the issue is that they all culminate at seven. So just in case you're joining me for the first time, there will not be an eighth seal. There's seven days to the week, you will have an eighth day to make a week of eight days. There are seven stars and seven last plagues and seven trumpets. Tonight my focus is on a particular danger that comes up under seal number seven. And just in case you have been reading through Revelation, you would discover that uh, the sixth seal winds up having us living between two major issues. As a matter of fact, the world as it is right now exists biblically between two verses in Revelation chapter 6. Didn't plan to go there, but since it just jumped in my mind, may I, well, I take you there. It's Revelation chapter 6. The Bible said when he had opened the sixth seal, there was, Great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became blood. The stars fell from heaven. Here we have three of the major signs that Jesus gave concerning his second coming on the end of the world. He gave four signs, and he said, listen, watch out for these. Already, three of them have been fulfilled. We come now to the awesome two verses between which we are living. We are living between two verses here. Revelation 6, 13 said, And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The world as it is now hangs between Revelation chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. You and I are living right now between these two verses. We are living between the signs that have already been fulfilled. Gone already is the darkening of the sun, May 19, 1780. Gone already is the moon turning blood. That same night, one historian said, by the way, it, you can look in the U.S. congressional records, you can look on the internet, you can type up the facts for yourself and discover it was never an eclipse. You'll discover also November 13, 1833, the falling, literally, the heavens were shaken, they say, and it's as though the stars of heaven, it's the greatest meteoric shower that the earth has ever seen. You and I are living between these two verses. And the next major sign that your Bible declares, the one that you and I are waiting for, the last one to come is in verse 14. Verse 13 tells us the ones that have already been fulfilled under seal number 6. Verse 14 tells us what will happen on the seal number 7. Verse 14 says, And the heavens departed, split as a scroll, when it is rolled up together. He said, So cataclysmic will be this issue that the mountains will crumble and fall. The text is clear. The Lord God says it will be such a cataclysmic stuff. There'll be no place to hide. I heard a song a long time ago that says, Oh, they run to the rock to hide themselves. But the rock cried out, I'm hiding too. There'll be no hiding place down here. The only place to hide now is to hide in the arms of Jesus. To hide under the wings of Jesus. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Hear me, sir. Hear me, ma'am. Hear me, king. Hear me, queen. Hear me, governor. Hear me, sons and daughters. We are living on the very verge of the second coming of Jesus. Can I tell you again? You don't have to believe in God for him to come. He's coming whether you believe, yes or no. Are you listening to me? And so we go to the chapter that I started with. It says that I saw the seven angels which stood before God. Son, if you just get me right back where you were, uh, the echo has started, you touched on something. I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Trumpets were used in the Old Testament context for three primary reasons. One, to sound the alarm so the soldiers could prepare for war. Number two, trumpets were blown to, to call attention to approaching royalty. Number three, as was typified in the system of sacrifices, particularly on the Day of Atonement, the trumpets were blown, the shofar, the ram's horn were blown ten days before the Day of Atonement. It was literally a summons to prepare for what they deemed to have been the very coming of God among themselves. And so here, my friend, in this chapter, the Bible said, I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel. Now listen to me. Separate from the seven angels with the seven trumpets. The seventh trumpet will signal the end of time and the beginning of eternity. The seventh trumpet, the Bible, and I'll read to you later on, when the seventh angel sounds, God's mystery of saving the sinner will have been finished. But before we get to that particular stage, there's something here. There is a present danger there's a clear and a present danger that I want to bring to your attention. That's why our topic, seventh angels, seventh trumpet, seventh angel, seventh seal danger. Detour now. The Bible said, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. Now hush your fuss. Let me say a few things here to you. Typified here is the issue of the intercessory ministry of Jesus. He ascended to heaven. He sits there at the right hand of God, making intercessions for whosoever will. Tonight, if you have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus, you don't have a problem that God can't handle. For at the right hand of God is all the help that you need. Tonight, I don't care what the devil in hell is doing in your life. At the right hand of God is somebody who was down here, who looked like you, who experienced your hunger, who experienced your pain. But he broke the bands of death asunder. He ascended to heaven. He sits at the right hand of God. And the Bible said in Hebrews 4 and verse 16, he said, we must come boldly to the throne of grace. Don't come with any timidity. He said, don't be afraid because I went to Calvary for you. Don't be afraid. I've already carried your sins on my shoulder. Don't be afraid. I took the death that was yours. Don't be afraid. I'm sitting at my father's right side that whatever you need, if you need grace, I've got grace enough for you. If you have sins that numbered a hundred million gallons, well, I've got a hundred 
billion gallons of grace. For where sin abound, grace doth much more abound. He said, if you are weak, then I've got the strength you need. He said, if you need wisdom, I am the wisdom of God. Whatever you need, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Because as sure as God lives, there's going to come a time when he lay down. I said, he lay down his robe of intercession. There will come a time when he will say, Father, enough is enough. That's the danger I seek to bring to your attention. That's the danger I seek to warn you of. The danger that comes up under the seventh seal. Are you listening to me? And the Bible said, the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, the smoke of the incense which comes with the prayers of the saints. I want to read something for you. Can I jump for a while to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Keep your fingers at Revelation 8. I'll come right back there momentarily. But for right now, jump with me to Romans the 8th chapter. And verse 28 says, and we know, uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, even to them who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes God has got to cause you to lose the job you love or lose the man you think you can't do without or lose the car that you think was your dream. Sometimes God has got to allow you to lose some stuff that's dear to you. Sometimes God has got to allow some people to disappear from your life so that you may understand that all that you need is Jesus. Are you listening to me? Sometimes, sometimes he breaks your heart. Sometimes he causes your tears to fall. Sometimes he refused to take the pain away because sometimes some people will not look up until God put them flat on their back. Are you listening to me? We know that all things work together for good. The text never said that all things are good. No, no, no. The text says that the God whom we serve, if the devil meant it for evil, then God can turn that thing around and cause it to work for your good. Are you listening to me? Was it not that what Joseph said to his brothers? He said, you sold me as a slave. You meant it for evil. You meant to hurt me. But God meant it for good. Are you listening to me? David said, David said, it was good to me that I have been afflicted. Affliction sometimes. We don't like it. But David said, it was good because it taught me have you ever wondered sometimes why it takes you so long to find that relationship with God? But you found that in the crucibles of pain. You found that in the midst of your suffering. All things can work together. But good to them that love God. And he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. But the trouble in the context of our text is what I bring to your attention. It says that when the angel who had the censer, can I read it for you again? Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar. Sometimes, beloved, we don't even know what to pray for. Sometimes in the midst of our hurt, in the midst of our pain, but you see when the words leave your lips, something else is mixed with it. Are you listening to me? So by the time it gets to God the Father, it is mixed with the intercession of God the Son. It's mixed with the intercession of the one who occupies that role. He is the only mediator between God and man. Are you listening to me? But there's a problem in the passage. Verse 5 said, now, now hear this, hear this. And the smoke of the incense which came up 
with the prayers, the smoke of the incense, which came up with the prayers. You see, the incense didn't come from the prayer person. You missed that. Can I read it for you? I'm heading somewhere. I'm reading again in your hearing, verse 3. And the, another angel came to the altar having a golden censer. He had a golden censer. Look at the next line. Look at the next line. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers. What did Paul say? Paul said, we don't even know what to pray for. We don't even know how to pray. But God who is rich in mercy, hears your prayer, not necessarily according to the words you use, but the intercessory ministry of Jesus takes your feeble prayers, present it to the Father. Are you listening to me? And God's wisdom provides the answer that you need. The text says it was offered with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now look at verse 5. And the angel took the censer. Listen to me. In the earlier verses, he was given incense, mixing with the prayers of the saints, ascending before God. But now, the text is introducing something to us, telling us that the intercessory ministry of Jesus will not go on forever. The text is introducing to us that the mediatorial work of Jesus at the right hand of God will not be indefinite. Are you listening to me? The text is saying to us that a day is coming when he will lay aside the robe of intercession. A day is coming when there will be nothing left to mix with the prayers of the saints. A day is coming when he will step aside. Are you listening to me? So the topic says, seventh angel, danger, seventh seal, danger, it's time to detour. If you're moving in a direction against God, it's time to turn away from that. Now is the time to send your prayers up so they can be mixed with the incense and the intercessory ministry of Jesus. Now is the time drunkard. Now is the time prostitute. Now is the time white collar criminal. Now is the time pristine young man, young lady. Now is the time to make your calling. And election sure. Now is the time where you have sinned. Grace is available. Where you have disobeyed, strength to obey is possible. Make the detour. The song says you've been running, running, running for a long, long time. You've been running, running with no peace of mind. How long will you run away, away from God? Detour from the journey where you're running away. It's time to make a U-turn and turn back to him. Detour sign jumps out at us here because the man at the right hand of God is soon to change position, is soon to change location. And there's a word here for those of us in church. Are you listening to me? Many of us have been playing hopscotch for too long. One foot in and one foot out. Sometimes in and sometimes out. Well, I've got to stop by and let you know. Stop, look, and listen. 
it's time to detour. It's time to stand up, stand up. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. Are you listening to me? These are no days to play hopscotch. These are no days to be one foot in and one foot out and sometimes in and sometimes out. There is enough power in the Holy Ghost to stand up strong. There is enough power at the mercy seat for you to gain the victory. There is enough power. There's power. There's power in the blood. You can defeat the devil not by might but by the spirit of the Lord God are you listening to me hear the word ye stubborn hearted sinner hear the word ye backsliding child of God hear the word ye hop jumping soul it's, we are too close now to the time when the man at the mercy seat will change location, will change position, will change his ministry. And the Bible said, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it to the earth. Where did he cast it? He cast it to the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Are you listening to me? And I jump down to chapter 10 and verse 7. And chapter 10 and verse 7 says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God will have been finished. Can I read it again? Can I read it for you one more time? It says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Well, this text, in the Greek context in which it was written, this text is written in the perfect tense, and its preferred reading ought to be read like this. When the seventh trumpet sounds, the mysteries of God will have been finished. The mysteries of God will have been finished. The mystery, the mystery, the mysteries of God will have been finished. Well, I'm glad you asked me. What is the mystery of God here, Pastor? Well, let me ask Paul to answer you. He speaks of the mystery of the gospel, but he makes it clear in 1st Timothy 1st Timothy chapter 1 1st Timothy chapter 3 rather 1st Timothy 3 and verse 16 1st Timothy 3 and verse 16 can you run with me quickly son so here we go 1st Timothy the third chapter can I read it for you it says here and without controversy without any confusion Without any contention and without controversy. What's the next line? Great indeed is the mystery of godliness. Well, what's it, Paul? He said God was manifest in the flesh. Meaning God showed up in human flesh. God, the sovereign God, stepped down from glory. And he came down through 42 generations, robed himself in human flesh. And when Mary gave birth in Bethlehem's manger, there came out one who was all God and all man at the same time. Are you listening to me? And the Bible said, great indeed is the mystery, the mystery how God could become a baby. I can't understand it, but I believe it. I accept it. I proclaim it. And the angel said to shepherds, we bring you good news for unto you is born this night a savior. Well, do you need a savior? I need a savior. Could my zeal, 
fail, no respite, no. Could my tears forever flow? Could my work save me? No, sir. I need a savior. And God in Jesus became my savior. Hallelujah. Great is the mystery of godliness. And in, in a short, cryptic, one verse text, he opened up the greatest mystery of all. We talk about the mystery of iniquity. How Lucifer made a devil of himself. And in order to destroy that mystery, here comes the mystery of godliness. Are you listening to me? Right here in this verse, we have the power of the gospel. We have the demonstration of the depth to which God went. That God in Christ became human being laid aside listen to me carefully he, he, he laid aside the same one before whom angels cover their faces he put on human flesh to walk in your moccasin to experience your pain to experience disappointment to experience hurt to experience grief to experience sorrow to experience hunger. He was even homeless. Is there a homeless person listening to me? Well, our Savior said, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He who is from the realms of glory made himself a nobody to save every nobody. Would you hear and say amen? And he said, he said, he was justified in the spirit. He was justified in the spirit. For in the water, in the Jordan, John the baptizer had Jesus, the son of God, in his hand to baptize him, bury him. God the Father spoke from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. Holy Ghost came down and justified him. Are you listening to me? He was seen of angels. He was preached unto the Gentiles. He was believed on in the world. Listen to me. There is no other Savior. I don't know any other but Jesus, the only redeemer, the only mediator between God and man, believed on in the world. Do you believe? The Bible said, if you just believe that Christ is the Son of God, if you accept him as your Savior and surrender your life to him, the rest is history. He'll give you power to trust and obey. He'll give you power to live right. And Paul said, he became flesh. He who is God became flesh. Justified in the Spirit. Angels saw him. We preach him to Gentiles. We preach him to Jews. We preach him across the world. And Paul, he said, he was received up into glory. Are you listening to me? And when he was ascending, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Don't leave out anything. Teach the whole world. Teach Jamaica. Teach Suriname. Teach Guyana. Teach Grenada. Teach Barbados. Teach St. Anne. Teach Portland and St. Mary. Teach it when they don't want to hear it. Teach it. Teach it. Teach all things. And lo, I will be with you to the very end of the age. But listen, 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 listen. He says, before, I don't want to leave this mystery stuff. I was going to leave it because the clock on the wall said your time is running out. But can I tell you something? Mystery 
that is expressed here. It says the mystery of God will have been finished. It's a mystery that God could take a prostitute named Rahab and made her the earthly great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that God could take a wretched drunkard, sobered him up, and send him on a mission. It's a mystery that God could take a gun-touting murderer and made him a preacher. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Great indeed is the mystery, the mystery, the mystery. And if you ever think that you are too much a sinner for God to save you, then you don't know the mystery of godliness. If you ever believe that you've gone too far, stop where you are. Don't commit suicide. Somebody listening and looking at me right now, you're contemplating the end of your life because you feel this is the only way out of your mess. The devil is a liar. You may not be able to see how God is going to do it, but great is the mystery of godliness. He'll take you in the depths of your brokenness. He'll take you in the depths of your misery. When you've lost purpose in life, when you've lost meaning, when you've lost your self-worth, when you've lost your self-esteem, when your husband or your wife or your mother or your father and your friends have turned their backs on you, God says, look unto me because I'll save you. He said, if you ever doubt my love, think of a harlot named Rahab. If you ever doubt me, go back to a wicked king named Manasseh, who for years did more wickedness than all the kings combined. And God said, when he came to himself, I know he had to go to prison, but even in prison, when he came to himself, God brought him back and set him down to be king. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Seventh angel. Danger is saying, stop where you are. Make the detour now. Don't destroy your life. Don't live any longer in flagrant disregard of the voice of God. It's a mystery that even though you may have been hating God all your life, but if right now you say, God, I'm sorry, and I repent, he treats you as though you've never, ever sinned. Great indeed is the mystery of godliness. He came down to your level because you couldn't get up to his. With a strong arm, he's lifting you up to show you what living is. He's come down to your brokenness to show you he can still mend broken pieces. It's a mystery. Some of us could have been dead a long time. Some of us should have been dead a long time. But it's a mystery that God still spare our lives. Devils try to kill us. Some of us but mercy says, no, no, no. Listen to me. If the devil had his way, you would have been dead in your sleep last night. If the devil had his way, even right now while you're contemplating ending your life. But I'm doing a battle tonight against the hosts of darkness. I summon the angels of Almighty God to find you where you are and break the shackles, break the chains, defeat the devil in hell and give you victory. You shall live live and not die you shall declare the glory hallelujah you shall declare the glory of the living God tonight in surrender and Saturday in the water and say great change since I was born the power of God 
God is available. Hallelujah to the Son of God. But it's time for a detour. It's time for the detour. Don't go any further along the road you're on. It's time to make the detour. Turn away. Turn away from disobedience. Detour from the doctrines of men. Detour from every relationship that threatens your soul's salvation. Turn away. Detour. Because it's going to happen soon when there'll be no more intercession. It's time to detour. The Bible said, when the seventh trumpet sounds, when the seventh angels sound, the mystery of God will have been finished. And the conclusion to Revelation 8, 1 to 5, and 10 verse 7 can be found in Revelation 11 and verse 15. It says here, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. When the seventh angel sounded, no more intercession, no more censor at the golden altar, nothing more to mix with your prayer. And somebody issued a frightful statement by saying, there will come a time when the saints of God will have to live in the presence of God without a mediator. Listen to me. He is fixing you up. He is fitting you to be more like Jesus. He's fitting you. And there are some stuff you've got to let go in order to be more like Jesus. There are some stuff you've got to take on in order to be more like Jesus. He's got to allow the Holy Ghost to climb down inside of you and take out of you what the devil has planted inside of you. And nature does not like a vacuum. So whatever God moves out that the devil plays in there, he's allowing the Holy Ghost to climb down inside of you to fill up the emptiness, to fill up the empty space, to give your life purpose and give your life meaning and give your life joy and give you strength to fight on and hope in the midst of despair. You can look the devil in his face and when he begins to hit you with all he's got because of what the Holy Ghost has placed inside of you, you can say we are more than conquerors through him. Hallelujah! to him who loved us. That was the reason why Paul wasn't afraid of Nero's chopping ox. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Well, why, Paul? How did you keep up? Well, Samuels, tell the world his grace is sufficient for every trial you face. Tell the world I never did it all by myself, but when I was weak, tell the world I wasn't even fit to be called a disciple. I was a hired murderer, but grace, 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 hallelujah. Grace has made me what I have become. And he said, I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is here. But I'm not worried. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But not for me only. Can I tell you, child of God, for every tear you've shed trying to make heaven your home, God will make it up to you. 
For every lie they've told on you, for every misery they've piled upon your shoulder, cling to Jesus, hold to God's unchanging hand, because eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. I'm done. There's a danger in the text. There's a danger at the seventh angel. It, hear me, sinner. There's a danger approaching. Because when the seventh angel sounds, the mystery of God will have been finished. The words of Revelation will declare, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. I ask you tonight, do you sense your need of Jesus? Then make that detour. Turn away from a life of sin. Turn away from a life of disobedience. Do you sense your need of Jesus? Do you sense mortal danger that's approaching you? There's a clear and present danger approaching every unrepentant sinner. There is a clear and present danger. Whether you are in church or out of church, there is a clear and present danger. But when the seventh trumpet sounds under the seventh seal, the mystery of God will have been finished. No more intercession. No more incense. No more censor. No more. No more. And the Savior who now sits at the mercy seat will himself become the judge. Can you type in the chat? I can face death with my sin. I want to turn. I want to make that detour. Type it in the chat. I want to make that detour. Maybe the Lord God has been calling you and there's something you're struggling with. Type in the chat. I want to make the detour. Type in the chat by the grace of God. I make my detour tonight. Scan that QR code. Click on that decision link. Call the numbers on the screen. Send a WhatsApp message to the number on the screen saying, tonight, Jesus, tonight, I don't have the strength. I don't have the power. But I've heard tonight that there's power at the mercy seat. And I make my detour back to the mercy seat. Prodigal son, won't you come back? Prodigal daughter, former member, you've drifted, you've wandered. It's an old song that says, I've wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. The paths of sin, too long I've trod, but now I'm coming home. Coming home, come, make that detour tonight. Come home to Jesus. This is Wednesday night, this coming Saturday. You've got a lot of stuff to do, but there's power in the name of Jesus to do them. Throw down the devil's sign and pick up the cross. Throw down the sign that you are on the devil's side. Change sides tonight. Make that detour and come back to Jesus. Call the number on your screen. Send a message. Send a WhatsApp message. To the number on your screen. You've wandered far, you've drifted. But you've got to come home tonight. Tonight in surrender. And Saturday in baptism. Tonight a detour from sin. And Saturday a welcome party around the throne of God. Tonight a detour from the devil. And surrender to Jesus. Send a message to the number on the screen. Scan that QR code. Click on that 
decision link there are people praying for you right now there are folk praying in the prayer room here in Jamaica I should tell you there's a there's a prayer room hosted in the inter-american division link together with over 3,000 persons praying for you join that prayer room join the prayer room of the inter-american division join the prayer room of the jamaica union join the vip prayer room when i'm done preaching tonight talk about what jesus means to you talk about the decision you're making for jesus talk about the fact that you're coming home make that decision tonight type in the chat i'm coming home type in the chat i'm tired of sin type in the chat i'm tired of straying lord type in the chat now i'm coming home type it in the chat tonight by the grace of god make that decision make that decision yes sir with bitter tears Oh, bless the Lord God. Now, now I'm coming. Now I'm coming. I can't go any further. Now I'm coming home. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Come on, young man. Come on, young lady. Come on to Jesus. This weekend is your baptism. Whatever you've got to let go, let it go for God's sake. Let it go and come. Hear me, world. Hear me, world. This world as it is can't last much longer. You may have gotten so used to the gospel that your ears can't hear anymore and your mind can't feel it. But hear it tonight. It's time to make that detour. It's time to make that detour. I'm done. I'm done. It's time to make that detour. Don't waste any more. Don't waste any more precious years. Don't waste your life anymore. Hear me, young man. Hear me, young lady. You've got the best days ahead of you. Live them with Jesus. At his right hand, there are pledges forevermore. Don't destroy your conscience. Don't allow the Holy Ghost to walk away from you. You've slammed the door shut in his face so often. Tonight, Make the detour. Sing the song, child. Sing the song. Coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Lord, I'm coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Never more to roam. Don't roam anymore. Don't waste anymore. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. He'll accept you. He'll forgive you. Come out of sin. Come out of error. Hallelujah. He sees your brokenness. He understands your heartache. Type in the chat tonight. I'm coming home. I'm coming home, Lord. I'm coming home. I'm coming home in obedience. I'm coming home to baptism. I'm coming home to keeping your commandments. I'm coming home to keeping the seventh day Sabbath. I'm coming home to returning a faithful tithe and offering. I'm coming home to being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I will roam no more. I'll resist no more. I'll fight no more. I'm coming home tonight so that on Saturday I'll seal that decision in baptism. No more roaming. No more straying. I'm done. Let us pray, Almighty God. We lift our hearts tonight and we join with holy angels and declare all hail the power of Jesus' name. We lift our hearts tonight in praise and adoration that only not only did you carry the cross, not only did you pay the price by shedding your blood, 
but you've become our high priest and just as the high priest in the earthly sanctuary would take the blood of an innocent lamb inside the most holy place tonight you're pleading your blood in the sanctuary in heaven tonight you're at the mercy seat in the heavenly sanctuary making intercession for the vilest of sinner mixing your holy righteousness mixing the incense of your holiness with our feeble prayers because sometimes God we don't even know what to pray or how to pray but the Holy Ghost make intercession for us with groanings that can't even be uttered thank you for your presence at the mercy seat thank you God that right now across the world there's mercy right now Jesus in Africa in India in China in Russia in North America and South America and Central America and the islands of the Caribbean the vilest sinner can find hope at the mercy seat the most wretched struggling soul can find victory tonight because of your intercession at the mercy seat but the text warns us of coming danger the text warns us that a danger is fast approaching when you will step aside from your ministry of intercession when the mystery of God will have been finished when mercy's door will close fully and there'll be no more appeals Lord God of heaven help someone right now to make that detour there's a lady crying in the chat tonight there's a mother weeping tonight in the chat there's a husband weeping tonight God there's a businessman tonight loving God weeping as he sits on his bed because he needs you they've messed up God there's somebody right now thinking that their life has no more value but I pray you'll defeat the devil right now I pray God you'll give that young man give that young lady the power to make the detour the detour away from suicide the detour away from common law living the detour away from shocking up the detour away from disobedience to your commandments the detour to obedience the detour to surrender to Jesus the detour to accept the commandments of Jesus the detour to accept the Sabbath of Jesus the detour to accept the baptism of Jesus that this coming Saturday around the world there'll be great rejoicing thank you thank you thank you in the name of the Father thank you in the name of the Son thank you in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit and let God's children say oh may the grace of God be with you I'll see you on Friday evening at six o'clock let's have a wonderful time together but around the world on Saturday from east to west and north to south I look forward to seeing you in the water sealing your decision for baptism and if you're an elder find somebody your church ought to be represented there ought not to be a single Seventh-day Adventist church anywhere in the world that will not have at least one soul to say yes Lord for your kingdom 
Here's one for baptism. Good night. I'll see you on Friday night. But now I'll hand you over to Grenada, the best in blue, and Montego Bay, the best in gray. God bless you, and we'll see you on Friday evening. Amen, amen. And we say, come home. Come home. Surrender now your heart. Surrender tonight your heart. God is knocking at your door, and he's waiting for you to let him in. So just let him in right now. Come home. Amen. Nicole. My brother, my sister, now is the time. My friend, now is the time to make the detour. All you need, all the help you need is at the right hand of God. Tonight, I give you Jesus. Because without him, how lost we would be. Amen to that. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. Well, before we phase this one out, I'm going to really make a very strong appeal to the church of God. And this is where we're going to network our prayers. That's right. I want to appeal to every baptized member in the household of faith. From now until Sabbath, let us pray assiduously that victory, victory will be realized on Sabbath. Thousands of souls will be liberated. Of course, and will be garnered into the family of God. There are so struggling families and marriages and so many things. But prayer, there's power in prayer. Oh, and in so prayer. all the saints right across the territory, beyond, let us network and pray like never before Man. for victory on Sabbath. Well, this is Amen. where we draw the curtains. Of course, I must say, Nicole, and all those Grenadians, it's good to have you. It was a joy as always, eh? To have you oh. here with us and to all our worshipers those in radio land and tv land and all those on the virtual digital network yes. yeah we are so happy and so yes. as it was said we will be back here friday evening 6 p.m miami time it promises yes. to be very, very awesome. It, awesome because on Friday, you have to be here. Be you be. have to spread the word because we're going to just be having prayer and praise. We're going to be giving all God all the glory, there all the go. honor, there and all the praise. And we are going to be here. So ensure that you are here and tell a friend to tell a friend that something mm. awesome will be happening here on this platform on Friday evening. And remember, we start a little bit earlier, so we start at 6. Here we go. Well, I know, Nicole, you'll be sharing that link in Grenada. Yes. Right across the territory. Oh, Being a All digital right. disciple, I promise you. There we go. Well, on behalf of the entire technical team, production team here, we just want to wish you a safe and a happy night until Friday. Stay safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. All God's children will be there. It's an evening of hope and praise. Join us this Friday night at 6 p.m. Miami time for the first ever Hope Beyond Musical Sabbath celebration. There will be selections from across the English-speaking territories of the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists. It promises to be a spirit-filled night with praise and another message of hope. Tune into our Hope Beyond live stream on YouTube and Facebook. Remember, be a digital disciple and share the link with your family and your friends. It's an evening of praise. Brought to you by Hope Beyond in conjunction with the Footprints of Hope Walking with Jesus online series. A new dawn of hope awaits you.